Welcome and welcome back. So for those of you who have been around for a while, you might remember that a couple of months ago I did a video about the history of Japanese kokeshi dolls, and this is sort of like a follow-up video to that. I had wanted to do a series on my channel about historical cultural dolls because in addition to like modern dolls, I'm interested in history in general. I just think it's very fascinating to learn about people and traditions and cultures that have come before us. And I figured that this would be a good way to like mesh those two interests on this channel. <laughs> so here I am again. The first video about the Kokeshi dolls did kind of get like a lukewarm response, which I'm not upset about at all. I completely understand that most people who are looking for doll content on YouTube are looking for current doll content, you know, like reviews or just stuff talking about dolls that are around currently or like more recent history, like vintage Barbies, that sort of thing. So like, I know that this is not the kind of content that is for everybody. I'm not at all upset and like, I don't want to come across like I am about the fact that that video wasn't like super popular. I completely get it, but it's still really fun for me and it's still something that I'm interested in. And some of you guys did still watch and seem to enjoy that video. So I wanted to do another one. So I'm posting this as like a Thursday kind of bonus video instead of my normal Monday video. I didn't want to make this my weekly video just because if it's not something that I feel like a vast majority of you guys are going to be interested in, I didn't want to make that my weekly video just because that seems kind of unfair. So bonus content it is. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see um, by the title, we are looking today at Russian nesting dolls. I do want to say that I have a few more ideas kind of listed for more videos in this sort of series to do as more bonus content, more traditional historical doll videos. But if you guys have any ideas, please do let me know down in the comments below. I love learning and for those of you who also want to hear this, I would love to be able to keep making these as just extra videos just to kind of entertain myself and hopefully entertain you guys and maybe learn a little bit along the way. So yeah, please let me know if you have any suggestions at all. I will be linking all of my sources for the research I did on Russian nesting dolls down below as well as photo credit for all of the photos that I use in this video. And finally, I do just want to apologize in advance if I mispronounce anything. I only speak English. <laughs> I was born and raised in America, so I did look up how to pronounce these Russian names and Russian words. Um, but I can't promise I'm gonna be perfect, so I'm doing my best, just sorry, I'm not trying to butcher these names. I just, my mouth won't always move in the way that I want it to, so we're gonna try our best. Let's go ahead and get into it. Russian nesting dolls, called matryoshka, are actually not nearly as old a tradition as I had expected, and probably not as old as you expect. The first one was actually carved in the early 1890s. And in order to understand the origins of that first doll, we actually have to go back further in time and to another country. As far back as the year 1000 AD, people in China were using nesting boxes. So a box within a box within a box and so on. Boxes became dolls and the practice spread to Japan. The Japanese nesting dolls could be used to depict deities or sages, typically stuff along that sort of vein, and they were possibly the inspiration for matryoshkas. I say possibly because there is some debate there. <laughs> The first Russian nesting doll was created in the so-called Children's Workshop, located near Moscow. It was made as a collaboration between woodcarver Vasily Zwilzdeshkin and artist Sergei Malutin. The workshop's patron, Sava Mamontov, had a wife named Elizaveta. Some people believe that Vasily and Sergei got the idea to make their own nesting doll after Elizaveta visited the workshop with a Japanese version. However, other sources claim that there was no inspiration from the work of other countries, and that the duo were simply using their ingenuity to build upon the idea of hollow, detachable Easter eggs that were already being made in Russia. Regardless of how they came upon the idea, there isn't really any argument that Vasily and Sergei were the two to first create a matryoshka. The first doll was composed of eight dolls in total, all that nestled inside of one another. It was made of lindenwood and painted to resemble a traditional Russian peasant girl. She was called the Rooster Girl, on account of the outermost doll being painted holding a black rooster. As the design was adopted and more dolls were produced, they were called Matryoshka, meaning literally Little Matron. The name was suitable as the dolls were seen as a symbol of motherhood and large Russian peasant families. The families Matryoshka represented could be a mother and her children, or an example of a more extended family all living under one roof with a caring mother at the heart of it all. Kind of more of a female-centric dynamic than you might see in some other countries. Very interesting. Matryoshkas steadily spread in production in Russia, but really had a boom in popularity when makers began to show them at cultural fairs all around Europe in the 1900s. 
As more people from more countries became aware of the dolls, they began to be seen in the eyes of the world as a very classic Russian icon, and an absolutely ideal souvenir for anyone who visited the country. Even if Vasily and Sergei weren't inspired by other nesting dolls, it's funny to think that other countries definitely did have their own versions, but by today many people associate nesting dolls strictly with Russia. That's kind of the first image that a lot of people have come to mind when they talk about nesting dolls. That's just a great way to show exactly how popular the Matryoshkas became. Russian nesting dolls were commonly thought by tourists from other countries to have been artisan made, but in fact they quickly became something that was mass produced. Of course, just like pretty much everything on this earth, there are exceptions to that rule, and there definitely were and still are some Matryoshkas that are made by hand and made like as an art form. Now, I was born and I've always lived in America, like I said earlier, so I can't speak from experience. But some of my sources did indicate that Matryoshkas being commodified actually led to a really interesting dichotomy. On the one hand, the original dolls were quite symbolic of the quote-unquote typical large Russian peasant family in sort of an idyllic way, kind of romanticizing that lifestyle. They could even be said to represent Mother Russia as a whole, with just that very matron aspect to them. On the other hand, with Matryoshkas being made in factories as souvenirs for tourists, the original meaning seems to have been tainted for some people. It's definitely a complicated topic to unravel, and one that, given my lack of Russian nationality, I don't really feel qualified to get too deeply into, but I do think it's interesting food for thought, and I would love to hear what you guys have to say about that in the comments. Even if Russian nesting dolls leave a bad taste in the mouths of some, though, they are undoubtedly wildly popular today. While many designs stick to the more traditional depictions of Russian women and their families, the possibilities of patterns for matryoshkas are practically endless in the modern world. There have been nesting dolls made of cartoons and political figures, for example. There have even been matryoshka painted with historical themes, depicting noblemen or warriors from days past, or fairy tales. Any sort of story can be kind of used to inspire a Matryoshka doll. People can even have a set custom painted to represent their own family, which I think is so, so sweet. In addition to the outer designs, Russian nesting dolls have also moved on from their original set of eight. Dolls can come in a very wide array of set sizes, from two dolls to twelve and even beyond that. There are distinct styles of Matryoshka that have come and gone as the practice of making them has evolved, and undoubtedly there is definitely more to come from these beloved toys as they continue to grow. So, there you have it, a little bit of history on Russian nesting dolls. Obviously, there is so much more that could be said, but I just like to do kind of quick little videos discussing a little bit of the history. I don't really want to get into like hour-long deep dives on this channel, just personally, it's not for me. Um, so definitely, if you guys are interested in learning more, I, like I said, have my sources linked in the description below if you want to do your own research, that is a great place to start. I do have to say, I was incredibly fascinated to learn just how recently Matryoshkas were invented, because I was thinking this was something that went back way further, and like, I know the 1890s was a long time ago, but when you consider just how iconic the symbol of a Matryoshka is today, and how many people know exactly what you're talking about if you say Russian nesting doll, I think it's crazy that they haven't been around that long in a historical context. I don't know, that was just, that was like incredibly fascinating to me. Anywho, I had a ton of fun looking into this topic and I hope that you guys enjoyed learning a little bit with me. If you did, it would be lovely for you to leave a like on this video just to let me know that I'm not shouting into the void and that there are at least a couple of people who like this sort of content. And like I said earlier, if you have any suggestions on other sorts of dolls that I could look into, please do let me know. But yeah, I hope that you guys have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be, and I will catch you in less than a week in the next video. Bye guys!